got some economic data this morning from ADP, which said that private payrolls fell by 20.2 million in April. That's actually a bit better than the 22 million that economists were predicting. A lot of damage in services, hospitality, transportation, utilities, and construction. That's where many of those job losses were concentrated. Let's get some more perspective on this. Mark Zandi is joining us via the phone now. He is Moody's Analytics Chief Economist. He's joining us from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mark, first of all, what do you think these numbers tell us, if anything, about what we're going to hear on Friday from the official government tally in terms of jobs lost? And then what does the path look like for unemployment for the rest of the year, as much as we can tell? Uh, well, the BLS on Friday will show a job loss of uh, 20 to 25 million. Uh, uh, the ADP is for private sector payrolls. The BLS number will be for uh, private sector plus government, and we'll see some job loss at state and local government. So, uh, and you know, obviously in this kind of ver very frenzied time, there's a lot of measurement issues. So I I'd say anywhere between 20 and 25 million. Uh, the ADP gives you a very good sense of the, the distribution of the impacts, though. Leisure, hospitality, retail, trade, construction, manufacturing, healthcare, all lost jobs. And I'm sure we're going to see that in the BLS numbers. And interestingly, uh, the ADP showed uh, large job losses across all uh, business uh, sizes, uh, but uh, smaller businesses, particularly micro businesses with fewer than 50 employees, got hit much harder. Uh, BLS doesn't have much to say on that, but um, uh, I'm sure it's very consistent. In terms of unemployment, uh, the unemployment rate will rise to somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. Again, a lot of measurement issues around that, uh, just exactly how the BLS counts an unemployed person. You have to be out of work and you have to be actively searching for work. And given the sheltering in place, many people can't search for work, so they may not be counted as officially unemployed, but somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. And, uh, you know, that that's probably the peak for uh, for this uh, crisis. April will be the peak. We'll, it might see a, May could also, depending on timing, we could also see another rise. But you know, we're pretty close to the peak right now. And then by Memorial Day, given the reopenings, uh, we'll start to see some job growth. June will show job growth. July, August, September unemployment will come in. But no, even then, we're only going to get about half the jobs back that we lost in in March and April and early May. And unemployment will only come back into the high single digits. So if you told me the unemployment rate on election day was eight, nine, ten percent, I, I, that sounds about right to me. Hey, it's Adam, Mark. Good to have you here. Um, so if I'm just the average person on the street and I keep hearing about the job cuts and layoffs that are going on right now, and that how we're going to have ten percent unemployment by the end of the year. How do we get back to full employment? We were there before COVID-19, essentially. And are we really possibly ever going to get back to that? Because I think some people are doubting if these jobs will come back. No, we'll get it back. It'll take a while. I mean, the, obviously, the first necessary condition for any full recovery is uh, a solution to the virus. And we need a vaccine, a therapy, something to, to make people feel comfortable about getting back to normal uh, I, I don't think that's really going to happen until we've got a medical solution. So travel will be impaired, trade, uh, businesses will remain cautious. We just won't really kick fully into gear until we have that solution. But let, let's just, for sake of argument, say mid-2021, we, we get something. That seems to be what the healthcare professionals feel is reasonable and prudent to expect. Then we'll, we'll, we will see much stronger growth as we move into 22. 2022, 2023. And, you know, uh, with a little bit of luck and some really good policymaking, we'll need the Fed to remain aggressive and we'll need some more help from lawmakers. Uh, we'll have to go from fiscal rescue packages to some fiscal stimulus. I think we can get back to full employment by mid-decade, 2024, 2025, something like that. I mean, it's a long road. I mean, yeah, but we'll, we'll get there. Hey, Mark, uh, you rightfully point out that micro businesses have been the hardest hit, but I don't know if you caught some of our interview with Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan saying that so many of these companies, whether they're in the energy space or just small businesses in general, had very unhealthy balance sheets going into the pandemic. Uh, I know it sounds very crude to say, but how do you anticipate on the other side of this, some of those businesses that were failing, right, that weren't necessarily uh, doing so hot? Should they kind of be in existence? Where are those kinds of small business owners looking to get work then? We will see a lot of business bankruptcy and failure, no doubt. I mean, you can already 
see the headlines. A lot of retailers, uh, big retailers, are already filing for bankruptcy, and they and they were struggling before the virus. Uh, brick and mortar retail uh, retailers were just getting crushed by Amazon and other online retailers. So that that was a trend already in place, and of course, this crisis only exacerbates that. And then a lot of other smaller companies, uh, firms. Uh, always are living kind of on the financial edge. I don't think anything was different about pre-COVID than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I mean, just to give you a sense of it, there's 8 million, roughly 8 million business establishments across the country. Four and a half million of them have fewer than four employees. And they're, you know, they're kind of mom and pop and, you know, they, they, they make a living. It's not great, but they're always living kind of sort of on the financial edge. They don't have banking relationships or access to a lot of credit. So when things don't stick to script, and obviously nothing about this is sticking to script, they're going to have a problem. So we're, we're going to see a lot of failures. So of those four and a half million, say of those eight million establishments, I, if you told me a couple, three years from now, we've lost a million of them, a million and a half of them, I don't think I'd be too surprised. And that's another reason why it's not going to be possible for the economy to get, get all, those, all these jo- lost jobs back quickly, because we're going to have to see businesses form, and that's going to take time for uh, for that to happen and for uh, for employment to uh, get back to where it was. Hey, Mark, Rick Newman here. Uh, you keep a uh, running uh, election model at Moody's Analytics. You had President Trump looking pretty good for re-election until recently. I think you're now showing Biden more likely to win based on uh, economic factors. Why don't you update that uh, us on that, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, th- it's flipped. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the economy matters. Uh, and because now unemployment is going to be close to double digit on Election Day and the stock market is down, which turns out to be another important variable in lots of voter uh, voter patterns, uh, the uh, the model does show with typical turnout. Uh, so if, uh, R's and D's turn out as they have on average uh, since 19, the 1980 election, when we uh, uh, estimated this model, uh, 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 Vice President Biden will be the next president. And what really happens is three states flip. Uh, Pennsylvania, where I live, that's my home. Uh, it's, it's the most important swing state. Uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, they, they were all in Trump's column before the COVID crisis. They're now in President Biden's column. So uh, the, the model is now say, saying that the, the, the election will, will be uh, will turn uh, to, in, into Biden's favor. I will say, though, uh, the one thing that uh, keeps President Trump uh, close, and it, 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 amazingly enough, he's, he's still close, is because of his uh, approval rating. It, you know, it goes up and down, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's really very stable uh, through the, the recent volatility. He's been very stable compared to where he was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And as long as that continues, uh, it'll uh, it'll still be a, a close call. And and finally, the last thing I'll say is turnout matters. Uh, so if the R's turn out en masse uh, or the D's turn out en masse, that, that, that could swing it uh, one way or the other. So it's still going to be a very close race. And Mark, finally, does response from the government also matter? In other words, um, leaving aside the president for a moment and his handling of all of this, what about the congressional response? We've seen a lot of stimulus. How This is sort of similar to what I asked Robert Kaplan a few moments ago. How much legs does that stimulus have to help people weather this thing? Because it feels like I mean, we're in the midst of it, so it's tough to tell. It feels like it's going to last for a long time, and the money might not be enough to to help people ride it out. Well, they're going to do more. Uh, Lawmakers, Congress, the administration, uh, they've done a lot. They've been very aggressive, $3 trillion in fiscal rescue so far. That's 15% of GDP. For context, you go back into the financial crisis and the years after, the total amount of fiscal support was only 10% of GDP. So... Uh, the response so far has been has been good, uh, very strong. You can debate the merits of you know in the individual uh, aspect of the support, like the payment protection plan, how effective was it? There was a great piece coming out of the New York Fed today saying it wasn't all that effective. But in the Main Street facility that the uh, that the, the Federal Reserve is is managing uh, on the behalf of Treasury, you know, we can debate those things. But that's a lot of cash, a lot of money. But having said that, uh, you're right. This is uh, going to be a slog. And we're, uh, lawmakers are going to have to come up with uh, more support. They're, they're debating another tranche of fiscal rescue now, uh, you know, help to state local governments, 
maybe uh, another uh, payment protection plan to take over from the the uh, current PPP program, uh, more money for UI, that kind of stuff. Uh, but they're going to have to do that. And then on the other side of this election, the next president is going to have to switch from fiscal rescue, just supporting the economy, to fiscal stimulus, how to get this economy moving again. So when we get that vaccine, we can get people back employed and get back to full employment faster, sooner rather than later. A lot of work still yet to do. Mark Zandi, thank you very much. He's the chief economist at Moody's. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.